فَهُوَ قَوْلِي رَبِّي زِدْنِي إِلْمَا أَلَّهُمَّا فَقْقِنَا فِي الدِّينِ آمين Here uh, Surah Baqarah will continue and the greatest ayah of the Quran that is Ayat al-Kursi also will continue in this uh, with the dua will start Nahmaduhu nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd We are doing English tafsi let's continue here So in this we gonna cover uh, Surah Al-Baqarah we gonna complete it and then we gonna start Surah al uh, uh, Ali Imran. So in this we're going to cover from 253 to 286. So here in the um, starting it starts with Tilka Rusulu Faddilna Baduhum Ala Badim Minhum Man Kallam Allahu Warafa Baduhum Darajat. Those messengers, some of them we caused to exceed others, among them were those to whom Allah spoke and raised some of them in decrease. So we see over here uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his prophets, his messengers. So the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent many prophets and many messengers. So for the guidance of mankind, it was said that we're about to, 124,000 prophets or in some narration 114,000 so uh, regardless uh, there have been over 100,000 prophets and out of them 300 were messengers they were rasul among them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose some about them and in different ways for uh, instance five of the messengers they are known as ulul azam those of determination and they are Nuh al-Islam, Ibrahim al-Islam, Musa al-Islam, Isa al-Islam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So these messengers were such that some of them were given preference over others and this was in the number of different ways. We see that even within the creation we see different things isn't it? In the creation also we see how the creation is and so on and so forth. So here uh, the difference uh, about the prophets and messenger how they have given the honor that is mentioned over here. In ayah number 253 we are doing Suratul Baqarah. We prefer some of them over other. But what happened the followers of the prophets what they did they began saying that prophets were more superior to the rest of the prophets and in adoration in respect of the prophets what they did they reject some of the prophets and in some they raise a great division in humanity uh, for example you know people who follow Musa al-Islam in their love in their adoration they have rejected other prophets. But those who love Isa al-Islam, follow Isa al-Islam in their love and respect and what they say. This is son of God. But what Allah says, if, if Allah had those generations succeeding them, would not have fought each other. After the clear proofs and come to them, but they differ. And some of them believe and some of them disbelieve. But Allah does whatever he intends. Now, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu. Those who believe, O oh, you who have believed, anfiku mimma razaknakum, spend from that which we have provided. Meaning, instead of thinking about oneself, how I am superior or how I am better, how is my prophet better than the rest of the prophets? Instead of this comparison, what is that we should do? Thinking of that which will bring closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be. Uh, doing unfiku spend spend what spend of that which we have given you spend of everything that we have given you what Allah has given us so those you know in the way of Allah we have to spend spend out of what Allah has given you before there comes a day in which there is no exchange and no friendship and no intercession and the disbelievers they were wrongdoers now the greatest ayah of the Quran that is ayat al-kursi Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum Allah there is no deity except him the ever living the sustainer of the existence la ta khuzu sinatu wala naw neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard to him belong whatever in heaven and whatever is on earth 
manzalazi yashfahu indahu illa bisni who is that can intercede with him except by his permission ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum he knows what is presently before them what will after them wala yuhiduna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bima sha and they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills wasiya kursi yahu samawati walad his uh, footstool extends over heaven and earth wala yauduhu hifzuhuma and the preservation tires him not wa huwa aliyul azim and he is most high the most great this aya aitul kursi is the greatest aya of the quran because it talks about who the greatest one it mentions who the greatest one allah azawajal and in this aya five names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned and almost 20 attributes of allah are mentioned we see that this aya is very powerful the recitation of this aya in the night is a means of protection from shaitan all night long when a person recites this aya in the night he is safe from shaitan how long for the entire duration of the night in hadith we learn that when a person goes to bed and he recites ayatul kursi then there will be a guard from allah who will protect him all the night long and shaitan will not be able to come near him until fajr even though if you are in period then also you can still recite ayatul kursi whatever you remember the ayas also abu huraira radiyallahu anhu who said this uh, to shaitan and shaitan said this to him when abu huraira got shaitan repeatedly in the night so what happened shaitan said this to abu huraira and the next morning when abu huraira told prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this so he said he's a liar kazi but he has spoken the truth what means when a person does recite aitul kursi in the night when he goes to bed then what he will happen until morning he is protected he is safe from home shaitan shaitan only said that this this uh, uh, aitul kursi if you recited no man uh, can harm anything because he was coming and you know stealing it aitul kursi what is mentioned the name of allah are mentioned who is described allah azawajal is described the first description of allah that is given in this aya in the name of allah the name of allah is very very powerful and mubarak its blessed name tabarak asma rabbika zil jalali wal ikram the name of your lord meaning the name of your lord allah that name is blessed the name is very powerful in hadith we learn that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you hear the barking of dogs and the braying of donkeys in the night then seek refuge with allah why because this creature they see what you do not see and limit going out when the footsteps have quitted meaning outside when when there is silent when there are no people walking around when everybody gone to sleep so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not go out at that time limit your going out at that time why because indeed allah spread in the night whoever of his creation that he will close the doors by saying bismillah with the name of allah when you close the doors at the night prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said say the name of allah upon them why because indeed shaitan cannot open a closed door on which bismillah has been mentioned when you are closing door saying bismillah when you enter you do the salam and enter so the person who does mention allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaitan flees away prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said screen between the eyes of the jinn and the nakedness of the children of adam when one of you enters the area of relieving once saying bismillah yani when you enter into the washroom before that you have to say the dua and enter it when we go to bathroom we are unclothed what is it will screen us from shaitan when you say mm, the dua before entering it even you know when you go to near to her husband what prevents you when uh, when you recite the dua that is so important and here in this we learn allah la ilaha illa hu there is no god worthy of worship only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la ilaha illa allah so this is abdulu zikr this is the most superior zikr the best zikr the best form of remembering allah is what saying la ilaha illa allah 
Nov said that if the sky is in the earth and whatever is within them, if they placed on one side of the scale, Laila Halala is placed on the other side of the scale, the later will be heavier. So Laila Halala. And also we learn that uh, a man came to Prophet at the battle of Khaybar. He embraced Islam. He said Laila Halala. And immediately he participated in the battle. And what happened? He passed away. He was killed in the battle. Prophet ﷺ, when he buried him, he said, This is a person who has not even made one sujood to Allah and he will enter Jannah. Why? Because he said, La ilaha illallah. How heavy is this statement? And La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Say it with your heart while you mean it. And here, Al Hayyul Qayyum, ever living and sustainer of all existence. Al Hayyul Qayyum, these are the names of Allah. And remember, these are no ordinary names of Allah. These names are what? Uh, Ismal Azam, the greatest name of Allah. Such names which, when a person says, when he's uh, making dua, then his dua will be accepted. Extreme difficulty, any worry. Ya hayu, ya qayyum bi rahmati kastaghis. That's what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite. We learned that one occasion, a man uh, made dua. He came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was near him, and Anas was also near by his uh, man. He made dua saying, Ya badiyu samawati, ya hayu, ya qayyum inni asaluka. Originator of heaven and earth, O ever living and eternal. Prophet said, do you know what this man has made dua? He said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, this man has called upon Allah by those names, which when he is called, then Allah accepts the dua. Subhanallah. So neither drowsiness overtake him nor sleep. To him belongs whatever is heaven and, and on the earth. Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. Means Allah knows what is present, what is, what will be after them. They encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. So Aytul Kursi uh, and uh, what is the Kursi of Allah is different from Arsh. Arsh is the throne and Kursi the scholars, the Sahaba, they interpreted as footstool of Allah. And how huge is this kursi? When compared to the sky, the earth, the entire creation, the universe we know about, when we learn hadith is that the entire universe, the sky, the earth compared to kursi of Allah is like a ring in a desert. Like a ring in a desert, the huge room. Imagine if there is a ring toss somewhere on the floor, imagine the size of that ring compared to his room. Then the size of that ring compared to huge massive desert, endless desert, what comparison? So how small the Samawat Ard? Allah says, Basya Kursi Yuhus Samawati Bala. So huge his Kursi, then imagine the magnitude of his throne, of his earth, then greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa al He is exalted, highest one. Because he is al-azim, the greatest. No one greater than Allah. Wa sabbi ismi rabbikal azim. Glorify the name of your Lord. And we say subhana rabbi al-azim in the ruku. So Abu Huraira reported that Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever says in the morning, Subhanal Lahil Azim wa bihamdihi, the person who says in the morning 100 and times and in the evening also 100 and times, they, then no one in the creation will have the same level as him. So this was the greatest ayah. Then there shall be no compulsion in acceptance of religion. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِتَاغُوتَ وَيُمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُسْكَ And so whoever disbelieves taghut and believing in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold with no break in it. And Allah is hearing and knowing. Allah is the only ally of those who believe.
so we have to believe only in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayah number 261 surah al-baqara masalul ladina yunfikuna amwalahum fi sabilillah the example of those people who spend their wealth in the way of allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes imagine a seed when is buried in the soil what happens eventually it grows and when it grows how much does it produce more than what it was before so likewise when a person spends in the way of allah it is as though he has buried a seed because when you give your wealth when you put that money in the box when you put that money in the hand of somebody else it's gone you don't see it anymore just like a seed is buried in the mud you don't see it it's hidden but it's not destroyed it will come so it will grow into seven spikes and each spike will be 100 grains and allah multiply his reward for whom he wills and allah is all encompassing and knowing so allah will multiply and allah will give you more and more 263 but sometimes you know you don't have anything you don't have anything to give but if you give also what are the condition kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity followed by injury and allah is free of need and forbearing so meaning if you want to give give it properly not by hurting those whom you give it because you know sometimes uh, we give a gift to somebody we give charity in allah's way then we keep reminding by the way remember the donation i gave you oh because of that donation please don't ask me for any you know this thing that thing we we keep on saying that but allah says kind speech and forgiveness are better than charity if you want to give it properly if you want to cause hurt after giving then it's better you don't give it because it you are going in in the way of allah you are giving for the allah but if you are hurting the people that's not like by allah subhanahu wa taala i number 265 an example of those who spend their wealth ibtiga mardatillah seeking means to the approval of allah wa tasbitam min anfusim an assuring reward for themselves people who spend this way there is like that of a garden and high ground which is hit by downpour any heavy rain rain so what happens it yields its fruit in double the ground is fertile rain is also good what will happen the produce will be double and even if it is not hit by a downpour then a drizzle is sufficient little bit rain is sufficient and allah what you do is seen so what do we learn here the work what is done to please allah will full conviction with certainty tasbeet with conviction says ibtiga mardatillah i want reward only from allah don't ask people and if they give also tell them in a nice manner i do not want this i want everything from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah will reward you ya ayyuhal ladina amanu ayah number 267 oh you who have believed spend from the good things which you have earned from which we have produced for you from the earth do not aim towards the defective thereof wala tayammamul khabis so do not intend to give defective things impure things bad things do not choose bad things many times it happens you give the gift but you hurt the other people by giving it don't do that yani defective do not aim towards the defective there from spending from that while you would not take yourself except with closed eyes and know that allah is free of need and praiseworthy yani it is so bad nobody wants to take it even yourself you til hikmat mayasha he gives a wisdom to whom he wills what is wisdom the ability to make the right decision right time whoever has been given wisdom has certainly been given much good and none will remain uh, remember except those of understanding so here in this ayah number 272 surah al-baqarah not upon you muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is responsibility for their guidance but allah guides whom he wills and whatever good you believe spend it for yourself and do not spend except seeking the wajh of allah 
वमा तुन फी हो ई लबदिगा वजहिल्ला ओनली द कॉन्टिनेंस ऑफ अल्लाह सीकिंग द फेस ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान अल्लाह तआला वमा तुन फी हो ई लबदिगा वजहिल्ला व्हाट एवर यू स्पेंड ऑफ गुड इट विल बी फुल्ली रिपेड टू यू एंड यू विल नॉट बी रॉन्ग चैरिटी इज फॉर द पुअर हु हैव बीन रेस्ट्रिक्टेड फॉर द कॉज ऑफ अल्लाह अनएबल टू मूव अबाउट इन द लैंड यानी हियर अप्रिशिएटिंग you know you give sirran alania nahar they spend in the day night secretly openly falah majruhum in the rabbihim for them they reward near lord wala kaufun alaihim wala hum yahzanu they shall be no fear nor will they grief so that much reward uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith we learn zillul mu'min yawm al qiyama sadaqa the shade of the believer on the day of judgment is his charity meaning a believer will be in the shade of his charity on the day of judgment remember that a person who brought one camel now imagine on that day of judgment there will be a 700 camels for him yani allah will increase allah will give more more allazina yaakuluna riba 275 those who consume riba interest we are taught what we should do with our wealth what is that dealing with the interest why because uh, those who compute consume interest cannot stand on the day of resurrection except as one stands who has been beaten by shaitan into insanity a person who has been possessed by shaitan who has been driven to madness by shaitan who is this person who will be like this on the day of judgment he who gives a loan and then in return takes back more that is the thing mentioned here riba you know allah dislikes riba interest what is riba increase in wealth how by taking from those who are already needy poor people needy that is because they say trade is just like interest but allah has permitted trade and forbidden in interest whoever has received an admonition from his lord and desist may have what is past and his affair rest with allah and whoever returns to dealing in interest those are the companions of the fire for man ada fa ulaika ashabun nar the one who knows that interest is haram still they take it what does allah says fa ulaika ashabun nar that this is not the fatwa of human being it is allah subhanahu wa taala is do, saying and they will be hum fiha khalidun they will abide eternally who take interest give and rest you are involved in that they are like a beaten by shaitan and there is a war with allah and rasul and there will be no barka in it whether you keep the money on interest and you eat from it or you take the interest you give the interest allah destroy interest he orders its abol- abolishment is its eradication yam haqullah riba 276 allah destroys interest he gives interest for the charities and allah does not like every sinning disbeliever prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there's no person who deals in interest a great deal but that he ends up with little meaning the more person deals with riba are more loss he incurs and uh, allah says and allah does not like every sinning disbeliever now here talking about ya ayyuhal ladina amanu 278 those who believe ittaqullaha have fear of allah bazarul and leave give up ma baqiya min riba whatever remains due to of interest in kuntum mu'minin if you should be believers meaning true iman leave riba listen to the hadith jabir radhiyallahu anhu said allah's messenger curse the acceptor of interest and its pay uh, akul riba wa mukilahu the one who eats it the one who feeds it yani deal with the riba has been caused fa illam tafalu so if you do not do that fazu bi harbi min allahi wa rasulihi a number 279 then be informed of a war against you from allah and his messenger that uh, come and fight allah come and fight his messenger but if you repent yani previously you took the riba you didn't know or whatever it may be the reason 
but now ask forgiveness if you repent then you may have your principle then you do not wrong nor are you wrong if someone who takes a loan from you in hardship and let there be postponed until the time of ease if you give from your uh, right as charity forgive that loan completely then it is better for you any if you forgive and forget that also fine but the kuyaman tur jo fihi illallah and fear a day when you will be returned to allah summa tuwaffa kullu nafsin ma kasabat then every soul will be compensated what it has earned they will not be treated unjustly now again who believed when you contract the debt yani you are giving to money to somebody you are taking it there should be written uh, document that's how a muslim are many families you know they have this problems uh, regarding the money they are dealing it verbally and they are doing it you know uh, without understanding what relation has the um, how they should distribute the, it and we should have the paperwork oh you who have believe when you contract a debt for a specified term then write it down and let us scribe write it down between you in fairness let no scribe refuse to write it as allah has taught him so let him write and let the one who has obligated dictate and let him fear allah and be honest let him fear of his lord not leaving anything out of it but if the one who has the obligation is of limited understanding or weak or unable to dictate yani his uh, knowledge or the way his fahm then let his guardian dictate in justice and bring to witness two witness from among you men if men are there to witness if they are not two men available then a man and two women from those whom you accept as witness so that if one of the women forgets then other women can remind her and let not uh, the witness refuse when they are called upon do not to weary to write it whether it's small or large for the specified them that is more just in the sight of allah yani whenever you are doing any kind of debt or the loan or any kind of financial matter write it down stronger evidence more likely to prevent doubt between you accept uh, what is an immediate transaction which you conduct uh, among yourself for there is no blame upon you if you do not write it take witness when you conclude contract yani you are not educated but you can you know make a witness but here it's so easy these days you have uh, phones with the cameras on you can record the voice you can take the video you can write it down there and number of things let no scribe be harmed or any witness no one should be harmed for if you do so indeed it's a grave disobedience and fear allah wa taqullah wa yuallimukum allah and allah will teach you and allah is knowing of all things even on the journey you should write it down the things now ayah number 284 to 286 uh, here ayahs mention this is given from the treasure of jannah lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum aw tufuhu yuhasibukum allah to allah belongs whatever in heaven and earth whether you show what is in yourself or conceal it allah will bring you to account then he will bring and he will forgive whomsoever he wills wa yuazibu man yasha and he will punish whom he wills wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir and allah is over all things competent so to allah belongs whatever is in heaven and earth what whether you show within yourself or conceal allah will bring you to account so in our hearts in our mind whatever is this allah knows is he can forgive whom he wills and punish it. so here clearly mention the last ayahs of the bakra if you recite this this is uh, given from the uh, treasure of jannah and it is enough for you if you recite it it is like a protection in the night just like you know we learn about ayatul kursi the same way from ayah number 283 to 286 till the end of surah al bakra that is enough for you. you if you can memorize it that would be nice because it's very easy so that's what it mentioned and here we see uh it shows like you know uh, our heart can commit any kind of sin but we have to be really careful we learn in hadith ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhu reported that when this verse was revealed whether you disclose it or you conceal it allah will call you to account 
They enter in the minds of companions of fear that had never entered and their minds and hearts before. Meaning companions became very afraid. The Sahaba, how can we have control over what is in our hearts? If we are held accountable for what is in the heart, we will be doomed. So Prophet ﷺ told them, Say, Samena Watana Vasallamna that we have heard, we have obeyed and we have submitted ourselves. So that's what we should also do it. And don't forget to recite these ayahs. Amina Rasulu bima unzila ilayhi mir rabbihi wal mu'minin. The messenger has believed what was revealed to him from his Lord. So uh, have the believers. And Allah says in this, uh, like, yani, more forgiveness is mentioned. Wa qalu samayna wa ta'ana. And they say we hear and we obey. Kufranaka rabbana. And we seek your forgiveness of Allah. Wa ilayka al masih. And to you is the final destination. So Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever performs wudu, as I have remember making dua, wudu is an act of worship, it's an act of obedience. Then pray to Raka without letting his thoughts wander. Then all of his previous sins will be forgiven. So you can avail this opportunity. So this was the um, Surah Al-Baqarah. Now we'll start Surah Al-Ali Imran. Surah Al-Ali Imran, just like Surah Al-Baqarah has a lot of worship prophet sallallahu said that the quran for it will come as an intercessor on the day of judgment learn suratul bakara and suratul ali imran and he said learn these two lights for they will come on the day of judgment as if they were two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds in rows pleading for those who recite them so we see the knowledge, the recitation of this surah is something that will be a means of protection for the person on day of judgment. It also starts with Alif Lam Mim. There also Surah Al-Baqarah also starts with Huruf uh, Muqattar and both the surahs are longer and both the surahs are Madani surahs and both the surah has the virtue. If it is recited, they will have the shape. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Allah, there is no deity except him. The ever living, the sustainer of existence. Bakara means cow. Here, Ali Imran, the family of Imran. He has sent down upon you, Prophet, the book in truth, confirming what was before it, and revealed the Torah and the Injil. Uh, ayah number 7, Suratul Ali Imran. It is he who has sent down to you, Prophet, the book. In it are the ayahs that are muhkamatun, that are precise, meaning they are clear in their meaning, they contain clear command. And uh, this verse is their foundation of the book, meaning majority of the Quran is like that and such verses as the foundation for understanding the rest of the Quran. Mutashabihat that are unspecific, meaning those ayahs whose meaning we cannot specify because Allah and his messengers have done so. But as those in people in whose heart is deviation from truth. They will follow that of it which is unspecific, seeking the discord and seeking interpretation. Yani they do interpretation according to their own will. No one knows its true interpretation except Allah. But those firm knowledge say we believe in Allah, all of it from our Lord. And no one will be reminded except those of understanding. Ali Imran ayah number 15. Say, shall I inform you of something better than that? Kul au unabbi ukum bi khairam min zalikum. So things are great. You know, Allah is reminding. There's a hadith. Prophet Wasallam said, What I fear for my nation is three things. Of them is desire that is followed. He also said, sweetness of this world can be bitterness in the hereafter. And bitterness of this world can actually be sweetness in the hereafter remember this world is not everything there is something much better for those who fear allah will be gardens in the presence of the lord beneath which rivers flow where they will abide eternally and purified spouse approval from jinnah yani you are happy with your spouse and allah is seeing of his servants ayah number 19 suratul ali imran Indeed, the religion in sight of Allah is Islam and those who were given the scripture did not differ except what knowledge had come to them. 
those who disbelieve in the signs of Allah and kill the prophets without right and kill those who order justice from among the people give them tidings of a painful punishment because Allah is angry and upset ayah number 24 this is because they say never will fire touch us except for few number days because they were deluded in their religion by what they were inventing yani they were saying themselves ayah number 26 kullahumma malikal mulk say Allah owner of sovereignty tuti al mulku mantasha you give sovereignty to whom you will means if someone has any power sovereignty any level of any own ownership it is allah favor upon them you take sovereignty away from whom you will you honor whom you will and you humble whom you will it's your hand is all good indeed you are over all things competent so many times it happens people belittle you mock you make fun of you don't worry allah is give you honor don't worry about the people what they are saying ayah number 31 say if you should love allah then follow me then allah will love you and forgive your sins allah is forgiving and merciful قُلْ أَدِيَ اللَّهَ وَأَدِيَ الرَّسُولِ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. But if they turn away, then indeed Allah does not like disbelievers. زُرِّيَّةً بَعْدُهَا مِنْ بَعْد They were descendants, some of them from others. And Allah is hearing and knowing. Ayah number 35 is called Imra'atu Imran. Allah says mentioned when wife of Imran said that my Lord indeed I have pledged to you what is in my womb. So she was also chosen. She said I pledge to you what is in my uh, womb. Meaning Maryam al-Islam's mother is saying that uh, for your service. Muharraran fataqabbal minni. So accept this from me. Indeed, you are hearing and knowing. So she decided before baby is born that she will dedicate this baby for the deen. So when she delivered, she said, My Lord, I have delivered a female. She thought maybe it was a male boy, but now it's a female. Still, she wants to dedicate for the sake of Allah. She says, Call it. She said, Rabbi, my Rab, in me, Bada'atuha, Unsa. She is talking to Allah. Remember that the best solution for our problems is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially at the time of the Hajj. So she is saying what to do. You know now it's a girl. Rabbi inni wada'atuha unsa. Wallahu alamu bima wada'at. And Allah knows most knowing what she delivered. Yani Allah knows about it. Isn't it? And the male is not like a female. Of course male and female are different. Yani now if female she need a guardian male for male she don't need any guardian right and now see she says Valaisa Zakaru Kalunsa male is not like a female and I have named her Maryam I seek refuge of her in you and for her descendants from Shaitan and expel from the mercy of Allah so she gave the name Maryam she named her okay and she also asked Auz Billah in the Rajim she asked protection from the shaitan that is most important for all the uh, mothers who are going to give the uh, birth to the baby so her lord accepted her with good accent he caused her to grow in a good manner so uh, giving the child so maryam al islam was born and after that, you know, somebody has to take care of Maryam al-Islam because she will be going to hackle. So, Zakaria al-Islam was the own uncle. Put her in the care of Zakaria every time. And so, she went to the hackle with the, you know, uh, in the guardianship of Zakaria al-Islam. So, whenever Zakaria al-Islam would enter, he would find some kind of fruits, which is not in the season. He was like amazed. Every time Zakaria al-Islam entered upon her, in prayer chamber, he found with her provision, he said, Oh Maryam, from where is this coming to you? 
She said it is from Allah. Indeed, Allah provides for whom He wills without any account. Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabbahu. Zakariya asked, you know, how come you have such a nice fruits? It's not even in season, you know, with the tafsir we know. But she said, Allah gave me. So there and then Zakariya al-Islam start making dua. Because Zakariya al-Islam don't have the progeny, don't have their kids, you know. He was very old now. His head is uh, white and his bones is feeble. Zakariya al-Islam call upon his Lord. Rabbi habli min ladunka zurriyatan tayyibatan. Oh my Lord, grant me from yourself. I want a child from yourself. A good offspring. Indeed, you are the hearer of supplication. Those who don't have children, they should make the dua and have complete conviction and yakin. Of course, you should tie the camel. You should go to the doctor and you should take care of it. But make this dua with complete yakin. Allah will grant you. Rabbi habli min ka zuriyatan. Tayyibatan. Rabbi habli min salihin. Rabbana hablana min ladun ka zuriyatan tayyibatan. Inna ka samiyud dua. So Zakariya al-Islam made the dua. Ayah number 39 and 40. Then what happened? Angels called him. While he was standing in the prayer in the chamber. Indeed Allah gives you good tidings of Yahya. Now name also has been given. Your child will be there. It will be a baby boy and Yahya. Allah gives you good things Yahya. Confirming a word from Allah and who will be honorable abstaining from women and uh, profit from among the righteous so that boy will be very righteous and Zakaria al-Islam said my lord how will I have a child or a boy when I have reached old age and my wife is barren he's asking Allah how is it because he was so surprised and so happy just like remember how Ibrahim al-Islam's wife was so happy and she was uh, uh, putting hand on her cheeks and you know uh, she was amazed. The angel said such is Allah. He does what he wills. Zakaria al-Islam said my lord make me a sign. Now he's so excited and happy he's asking what is a sign. He said your sign is that you will not be able to speak to the people for three days. He, three days he will be quiet but how he going to talk except by gesture. This is like a chuppi ka rosa, you know, in that uh, time it used to have, you know, they will be silent, they would not talk. Still some people do that, they don't talk and uh, keep that uh, fasting. And in coming up ayahs also, uh, Maryam al-Islam will be quiet and she won't be talking and, you know, Isa al-Islam will be answering the question. And remember your Lord much and exalt him with the praise in the evening and morning. What we learn from this uh, Zakaria al-Islam is getting the blessing of a child after so many years and what he was asked to do to be quiet and do the zikr of Allah morning and evening all the pregnant women do zikr if you are not pregnant also do zikr zikr will bring happiness always have good hopes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah can do miracles but is qalatil malaika and mentioned the angel said oh Maryam indeed Allah has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the world now Maryam al-Islam's test is going on oh Maryam be devoutly, uh, devoutly obedient to our Lord prostrate and bow with those who bow in a prayer Zalika min ambail ghaibi nuhi hi ilik and this is the true wahi is informed to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Maryam al-Islam and mentioned when angel said oh Maryam indeed Allah gives you good news of the word from him whose name will be Masih Isa the son of Maryam distinguished in the world and the hereafter and among those brought near to Allah now she got so much scared because she's a chaste woman she gonna have a baby when angel said oh Maryam indeed Allah gives you a good tiding of a word from him the name will be the Masih Isa the son of Maryam distinguished in the world and hereafter among those brought near to Allah. He will speak to the people in the cradle and in maturity and will be of the righteous. He, she said, my Lord, how will I have a child when no man has touched me? Such is Allah. He creates, he wills. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, be and it is. Kun fayakun. So this is, you know, miracle. And Allah is testing Maryam al-Islam. She going to have the baby and she ha her test is going on. She has to be quiet. The only baby, this baby and the other baby who spoke in the cradle was, one of them is Isa al-Islam. And he will teach him writing, wisdom and Torah and Injil. Make him messenger to the children of Israel. 
and I have confirming what has before me or Torah and make lawful in Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum Fabudu. Indeed Allah is my Lord and your Lord's worship. So Isa al Islam was very righteous. He he was a prophet. But when Isa al Islam felt persistence in disbelief from them, he said, Who are my supporters for the cause of Allah? The Hawariyun disciple they said, We are the supporters for Allah. Nahnu Ansar Allah in ayah number fifty two. Like you know, they were enemies of Isa al Islam, but they were the disciples who were ready to help to Isa al-Islam. So he asked the help. They said, we have believed in Allah and testify we are Muslims. Our Lord, we believe in what you have revealed and follow the messengers. The disbelievers plan, but Allah planned and written, Allah is the best of the planner. Mention Allah said, O Isa, indeed, I will take you and raise you to myself and purify you from those who disbelieve and make those who follow you superior to those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. Then to me is your return. So Isa al Islam was taken up, and the uh, somewhat similar to that uh, Isa al Islam from his disciple, he was the one who was uh, like they were uh, thinking to he is hanged, but not Isa al Islam. Isa al Islam was taken up, and but that the uh, way they were think, thinking. And then ayah number uh, sixty two in the Hazal Lahul. And indeed, this is the true narration. So, Allah is giving this narration through Wahi to Prophet Muhammad about Isa al Islam, Maryam al Islam, and Zakaria al Islam. And now, O people of book, scripture come to the word that is equitable between us and you. Now, Ibrahim al Islam is mentioned, ayah number 67. Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was one inclining towards truth and he was not of the polytheist a faction of the people of the scripture which they could mislead you but they did not mislead except themselves and they perceive it not and now in the following ayah we see ayah number 75 among the people of scripture is he who if you entrust him with a great amount of wealth he will return to you people of both they are so faithful among them is who if you entrust him with a single silver coin he will not return it to yours unless you are constantly standing over them demanding it any people are good and bad even in the ahli kitab it's not allowable it's not possible for a human that allah should give the scripture and authority and profited and then he would say to the people be servants to me rather than allah but instead he would say Rabbaniyina, be Rabbaniyin, be a pious scholars because of what you have taught the scripture and because of what you have studied. So, here you know, Ulama of Bani Israel has been mentioned here. And ayah number 85 and whoever desire other than Islam as religion, never it will be accepted from him. He is in the hereafter, will be among loser. Ayah number 89, except for those who repent after that and correct themselves, for indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. In ayah number 91, indeed those who disbelieve and die while they are disbelievers, never would be the whole capacity of earth in gold be accepted from one of them. If he would seek to ransom himself, for those will be a painful punishment, they will have no helpers. So, yani in this world only you have to uh, correct your mistake in the hereafter nobody will protect you so that is the thing mentioned jazakallah khairan kaseera subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka nastaghfiruka natub ilaik assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakallah khairan kaseera inshallah see you in the other days Please do join us. Jazakallah khairan kaseer.